Welcome back, everyone, to more Gateway to the Savage Frontier. So we're leaving Luskin uh, after boating back over uh, from Tour. And uh, it looks like every time you leave Luskin with the statue, you get attacked. So this is the battle that I was talking about that uh, happened off camera. So I figured, why not? Let's go ahead and show you this ass whoopage. I'll go ahead and control the mages because they're obviously not using their fucking brains. Drop some magic missiles on those margoils. Stony bitches. Putting up a little bit of a fight. No, don't shoot him, you dingle doof. You ain't fleeing nowhere, biatch. You're gonna take it. All right. Always will take gems. Thank you. All right, let's make our way to Neverwinter. I'm just gonna try to flee because honestly, most of this shit is not worth fighting. You guys haven't seen goblins yet. And you're not going to get to today. Yes, the city seems different. Ah, you did it after all. Meteorite ore is useful stuff, no doubt about it. Come back in three days and we'll see what I have for you. What the fuck? Alright, let's go rest somewhere for three days because I want my fucking sword. You know? I forget where the inn is here. Oh, we need to go check out the vault, too. I might need some money. Sixteen thousand platinum. Oh, yeah. Take the gold and the gems. Go convert that real quick. But we need to rest three days, apparently. Rest days. One, two, three. Fucking Sturge.
I have for you this weapon, the Sword of Stone Cutting. Guard it well, for it will do plus three damage against all evil beings. Better yet, against monsters made of stone, it will do double damage. May Tyr guide your hand. Yeah, you know we're taking that over. <laughs> lug Lug always gets the best shit. All right, Trog, you can have the plus two sword. But the plus three sword of stone getting goes to Lug Lug. Thank you, sir. D8 plus eight. Double damage versus stone bitches. Watch out, Margoyles. Oh, we've got the plus one sword of ice from Dale. Well, let's go ahead and give this to Fidge Fidge. Definitely an upgrade from the mace. In fact, now we can sell that plus one mace. D8 plus seven, D8 plus six, and D8 plus three. I just noticed that it shows our goodies down here. Just need to get Fidget some plus five leather. Then I'll be happy. I need to find the weapon shot, not this bullshit. Go ahead and appraise our gems. Gems aren't that great, but whatever. All right, let's go ahead and buy a stack of everything for our mages and curvish. Just to stay on top of it. And then I'll just pause the camera and get us back to town. Well, no, I'll keep the shit rolling. Why not? I'm actually short on time today. I have a friend's birthday party to go to. Well, birthday dinner anyways. So, I did not get to record as much as I wanted to. It's been a busy, busy weekend actually. Uh, and I won't have any time tomorrow either. I am due to just take a week off and LP all fucking week. Those were the those were the good game hoarder days. Try to make that happen this year for sure. But PTO is a hot commodity. Two hundred and twelve arrows. There you go. Seven hundred and fifty gold for the mace. Guess I could have kept the mace for monsters that are resistant to slashing and piercing, but it's pretty much skeletons and not a whole lot of other monsters in this game that I think you need to worry about that with. All right, I think we're good here. Let's take our monies back. It's a good amount to carry. The ancient gates of Neverwinter stand tall as ever, with guards standing at rigid attention on either side.
Now we gotta wait till late in the morning. Make sure we turn the search off or we're going to fuck that up. It doesn't have to be right at 8. I think it's anywhere from 7.30 to 8.30. You can see we're a little early there. And now, since it's... Nighttime, we gotta wait again. We're gonna head to Gundarlin. Gundarlin. See if we can go in right at 7.30 here. Whoop. There we go. You cross the narrow gangplank and enter the ship. Sturdy voices cry out from below as the oarsmen pull the vessel through the bubbling waters of the Bay of Turin and then to the southeast towards Gundalin. The ship slowly edges its way to the pier of Gundbog, Gundalin's largest town. A rope is thrown to the tired old man who stands precariously near the edge of the warped wooden planking, and you scramble onto shore. It feels good to walk on solid ground again. From what you saw entering the bay, Gunnpog is a major seaport. Warehouses, dry docks, and solidly built houses line the edge of an otherwise uninviting craggy isle. Welcome to Gundalan. Gunberg, this is the capital of Gundarlan. It's the largest city on any island around this part of the trackless sea. Although it is a city of Northmen, it is a member of the Lord's Alliance. There is some law and order here. Let's see what the fuck is going on. The cross sign waves in the breeze here, emblazoned with the words, Green Turtle Inn. Company of the Brazen Pennant Passage, by sea to turn in Neverwinter. Interesting. Oh, 900 hours. I can travel to Neverwinter from here. Ain't that some shit. Temple of Saloon. To the north lies a magnificent palace, weathered by centuries of fierce storms and salty fog. Halt! King Redax can see no one. He's assembling an expedition to save Princess Jagaerda. What the fuck? Jagger Jagaerda. Jagaerda. Okay, that's a hell of a name, princess. In the next room, you can hear men shouting. One says, I told you I don't know what we're going to do. Well, we gotta look for the fucking princess, apparently. Look, pirates, I got time for your shit. I'm looking for the princess. The sharper lineage, quality armaments, and protective gear. What you got? You got anything worth this shit? No, it's the same shit, different day, but at least the plate mail isn't overpriced. Small store to the east. Tana's merchandise shop. shop. Same shit, different day. Same shit, different shop also. You burst through the doorway, landing in a pile on the floor. Looking up, you see a young woman with long blonde hair, barely out of her teens, glaring at you. The bodies of several pirates lie twisted on the floor behind her. Are you Jagger Jagger Erda? Trog asks. The woman nods disgustingly. Lug Lug stands and bows, saying, We've come to rescue you! She snorts. Rescue? 
If you'd come sooner, I'd have had to rescue you. Princess Jagadara, says Krevish. I'm sure the king's been worried. Jagadara interrupts him, bellowing. If my father even sneezed near you, little man, you'd be blown across the room. Kravish blesses and is silent. You explain your mission, and when you finish, Jagadara's serious look falls away, and she laughs out loud. Very well, brave adventurers, she says. You can be my honor guard on the way back to the palace. You escort Jagadara the short distance to the palace, where King Redax embraces her excitedly, and then welcomes you. Thank you for rescuing my daughter, he says. As a token of my gratitude, accept this reward. Oh, we will. We will accept this fucking reward. It's a plus one shield. We'll give it a try, because he could probably use a little AC boost. And his normal shield sucks. The king tells you about the purple rocks, and you record his story as journal entry 55. The purple rocks may be the isles you seek, said the king. They have become a sad place. Their people were like other island folk, hardworking, many of them seafarers. A few generations ago, something strange occurred, and many gathered in a secret cult, which has become very powerful, called the Kraken Society. They worship the symbol of the Kraken, a huge squid that can easily fuck up ships. There are two islands in the Purple Rocks, Utheral and Trisk. The people of Utheral are impoverished, but continue to live as before. The people of Trisk, however, have been completely consumed by the Krakens and are controlled by them. I know you have been deterred already, but there is that you have the best chance of finding someone who will take you to Purple Rocks. May Saloon guide you on your journey. All right, fair enough. Well, we rescued the princess, which was a rather easy task. As you can see here from the map, all you have to do is you go to this. Of course, you know, I have, I got the maps pulled up, but there's a secret door here and then a secret door here that we kick down and boom, there she is. It's uh, actually the only way into her room um, or the room where she's being held. A pair of statues depicting monsters stand against the wall. Actually, they're no longer standing there. One just leaped at Lug Lug. Their fucking margoils are gonna get it. Lug Lug's got that stone cutting sword. Oh, boom shakalaka! We have the princess with us, I guess? I didn't realize she was hanging out with the party. Little barbarian bitch. I just don't like this at all, says Clot. Oh, wait, in a very deep, husky voice for a female. This is just the kind of place where you'd expect to find Scrags. All right. We like Scraggy Scrags. They're fucking cute. They're cute and they like fireballs to the dome piece. So does Lug Lug. I just now realized I didn't even recognize the poor girl. 
Holy silver fuck. No, I'm not carrying that shit. Level 4 female fighter. Lawful neutral. Nice strength and charisma. It's gotta be them titties. You wanna tr trade me that plus one chainmail, girly? Who goes there? Ask a voice. Adventurers who need to answer to no one, says Trog. You tell them, Trog. Pirates and their Uthugs. Uthugs. My guy should not be missing anything at this point. Plus three longsword? Come on, man. You could scoot over, Clot. Let Love Love Go get in there. But no. The path here begins to climb steeply, wandering up the face of the cliffs. The top of this ridge is a popular lookout, or so the scattered trash suggest. From this high ridge, you think you see something large break the surface far out at sea. Yes, it's a fucking kraken. You guessed it. Now the path slopes downward sharply here. No sooner does the party enter the area than the stone monsters spring to life. They advance, fangs barred, snarling in anticipation of battle. I'm gonna cast magic missile! Of course you missed. You turd biscuit. Margo just took a 22 smack a Rooney to the forehead. Find a little place to rest her up. Pirates, go away. I'm not here for random battles. Would you like to train? No. This is the one city in the islands that we can actually train in, I believe. I'm not sure there's really too much more to do here. I think we can head to the purple cocks. I mean, purple rocks. I'm just checking. This is definitely the plus one shield is the only thing of uh, magic that we wanted. Um, let's see.
Pirates, they're... Uh... Very tenacious. This is where you first stepped off the ship to Gondarlin. The ships depart here from each morning. Well, it's 6 a.m. We need it to be nine. Sailor gestures to open palm. That'll be 300 gold pieces, cash up front, for your whole party. Clot groans. That's triple what we paid in Luskin. And turn. We go to leave. All right, 150 gold, but that's my last offer. No haggling, no dealers, no barter, no fast talk, no limber lips, no apple shining, whining, pining, moaning, or price honing, no landlubber, blubber, no matter patter. Okay, we'll pay. The crew raises the anchor and sails fill, and the ship sails proudly out of the Gundbog Harbor on a friendly breeze. Crash! A yard arm falls to the deck inches from Lilith. You look up to see a huge testicle, tentacles wrapping themselves around the bow. The whole ship groans as a giant kraken tightens its inexorable grip. Moments later, you're in the water as the ship disintegrates beneath the twisting tentacles. Swim away from the wreck! Lug Lug calls out. He was taking a shit when he said that. Bone-chilling screams reach your ears, but you don't dare look back. Soon the tragedy is over, and all you hear is the splashing of the party in the gentle seas. You pull together a mass of boards and barrels to rig a crude raft. And the waiting begins for three days. No trace of ship or land. Hungry and exhausted, you finally spot a tiny island. Paddling with your last ounce of strength, you propel the makeshift raft to shore. Where it is dashed to bits moments after you crawl up on the rocks to safety. Here we are in the Purple Rocks. There are two islands in the Purple Rocks, Trisk off in the west and Uthral in the east. Like we learned earlier, the people of Trisk have been enslaved by the Kraken Society, which gathers and sells information to whoever it wants. It carries out all kinds of evil shit missions for an appropriate fee. We visited their hidden complex, complex below Yartar, and uh, that is known to be the largest base that they maintain on the mainland. The house of the south looks bigger and better built than the other structures in this tiny village. The leader of this village seems suspicious of you and keeps casting strange glances at Fidget. Eventually, though, he relaxes and you record your conversation as journal entry 40. The headquarters of the Kraken Society is on Trisk, the other island just across the strait. They also have fortresses here on Uthral, on the western coast, where they force us to pay tribute. They take almost everything we have, but if we don't pay, they will take us away as slaves. I don't know if you can defeat them, but whatever you do can only make our lives better. Right on. Let's kill them. And painted sign to the north says, Visitors welcome. Neat, clean room. No dirty boots, please. All right. We can rest there. If we need. 
Three tall, foul-smelling creatures are kneeling in the center of this beach, tearing strips of meat from a single small fish they've caught. When they see the party, they cry out in harsh, high tones, and then they attack. <coughs> Smelly <coughs> bastards. Surrendered. That's right, Biatch. Across the strait, you see a massive stone fortress rising from another island, its tentacle-like columns, an unmistakable signature. It is the headquarters of the Kraken. That's a dope-ass headquarter. I need to have a house like that. Three guards leap to their feet as you enter the room and start yelling, Outsiders! Outsiders! She figured it out. <laughs> All's in trouble now. Trog has gained a level. That means that Lug Lug is not far behind. Going through the papers scattered on the fortress floor, you find a curious message and copy it. Journal entry 36. Sees a laggy god. Slusty old creek. Shoot it. Titi kukukula. Gadi tre. Adi si. Titi dua usata tuvu. Is Fotiki B Wala City. All right, it's a secret message. We need to figure out what it means, but I think there's a second part to that that we want to find first. A small boat is moored. Besides this pier, it looks like an old and well worn. It looks old and well worn, but still appears to be seaworthy. Do you wish to take it to the other island? Not yet, not yet. The delicate tower of a small lighthouse rises to the north. Its powerful lamp is visible, burning through a thin mantle of whirling fog.
Several men are in the lighthouse. Keep recorders rummaging through its cabinets and chesticles. They attack. I cast fireball. I don't care. Lug Lug looks around the ruined lighthouse and says, If those pirates were tending the light, maybe whoever plans to use it is an enemy, not a friend. Should we douse it? Yes, we do. Dousing the uh, light here will give us a little bit more time to intercept the incoming vessel. Uh, Valamon ship, but we'll get to that later. It does, in fact, help us, though, so make sure you douse that light. And let's see if we can get away with the resticle here. As you enter the fortress, three guards rush forward to attack you. But as they do, they seem to be looking around the room in fear. Probably because there's a fireball coming at their ass. Playing it safe. And on the guard's pocket, you find a strange message and copy it into your journal as entry 49. OTL letter 8, HF, owner OTS, ha, it will read, hit in, F O K, ho, o, on, or alt, H hog, out here, ha. So when you put those two journal entries together, the two that I just read, like I had, uh, you know, uh, something stuck in my mouth. Um, I'll let you be the, I'll let you use your imagination on that. Uh, <laughs> but when you combine the two, alternating the letters from each scrap of paper, you get, it comes up with the words, cost all at it guard, castle the of corner, southwest the to it take will, guards the threatened if. If you read that backwards, it says, if threatened, the guards will take it to the southwest corner of the castle. Guard it with all cost. So we know that likely the statuette that we're looking for is going to be in the southwest corner. And with that being said, I think it's about time we head to the Kraken headquarters.
We know, we know. We gotta head to the boat. Um, let's go ahead and... Rest and save at the safe space here. You pull your small battered boat onto the narrow beach, and everyone clambers on shore. Ronstock points out a good hiding place behind some rocks, and soon the boat is out of sight. You look high above you to the west and record what you see as General Entry 35. The castle that rose above us was so great in size that it dominated the entire island, as if it were a statue, and the whole of Trisk were only its base. The front of the building was carved in the image of a massive squid that rose a hundred feet above the island, its huge eyes glowing from some frightful hidden light. Behind it, the building gradually transformed into a heavily fortified castle with its parapets that seemed to go on and on until they merged into the cliff sides of the coast. Alright, so this is somewhat of a time mission. Basically, uh, once you land here, and we need to save... Uh, a timer starts, and we have, since we turned off the light, we have 30, I believe, 30, what is it? Uh, 30 minutes of time before extra guards are going to be added to the battle. Uh, we're trying to basically find the um, Statue of the West, and it moves throughout the, the Kraken complex here, uh, and then out through the corridor to the pier area. Takes 30 game minutes. So, yeah, we want to hurry. And I don't think we can go straight through this path here. That We're trying not to sound the alarm as well. So we're going to head south and go through this area. Let's go ahead and save as B. And hope we don't fuck this up. On a promontory to the south, a small fortress has been built. Great waves crash on the rocks below its parapets. Guards leap to their feet and attack. We also can't let any guards escape or... That will also sound the alarm. Can't see him, so I'm going to hit this one.
Box his ass in. Lug Lug's got his level. It's going to bring them both to seven. Their cap is at eight for this game, so we still got a level to gain for them. So experience is still worthwhile. And I think our mage has still got a level. Clot is the only one that's definitely maxed. Yeah, I believe our, our magic users can go to level seven. We don't want to rest, we just want to save. Save on C here. The path is very steep. You reach the top of the rocky ridge you have been climbing. Below you to the west lies the island's narrow harbor. You record what you see there as journal entry 41. Rounding a rocky point far below us was a ship with a single huge red sail. A large black M filled its billowing expanse, from which we could only speculate was the symbol of Lord Manshoon, the leader of Zuntil Keep. A single man stood at the railing near the bow, his black cape flowing behind him in a stiff sea breeze. Could it be Valgamon himself? The ship swung to the northwest, its sail dropping as it entered the lee of the island, and started to approach a large dock. Men ran across the decks and scrambled up the rigging as they prepared for their arrival. If the ship was coming for the statuette, our time was running out. I just hope I'm going to the right place here. As you enter this room, you can tell... That something isn't right about the far wall. It almost looks as if, if it's moving. <laughs> Boom! Move that, biatch! Crack and attack. Yeah, big battle. And a kind of a shitty fireball. But we got more where that came from. Fuck it!
I should have cast prayer, damn it. Forgot. It's alright, I think we're okay. Uh, how can you not figure out the right way to go, dude? Well, I guess I was wrong because I thought the, uh, I thought it was here. Ah, as you pass through the doorway, you discover a heavily guarded group of slaves who are carrying a great chest made from a single huge pearl atop a gilded letter. The slaves fall back as the guards run to attack. The bell inside rings loudly, sounding the alarm. Footsteps run from all directions and commands are shouted in the air. Well, I probably want to reload now. I'm missing my fireball. That's going to make things a little easier. Yeah. Oh no, you stay back. You dumb bitch. Yeah. Well, we'll bandage her so we can get her dumb ass up later. Another one bites the dust, and another one. Oh, 
Oh, he didn't make that second save. Tough titty. All right, the AI's got them all split up like a bunch of fucking idiots. I have no clue where you're fucking going. They can't see the path because of where the wall is and how it ends, so it's got to be Lug Lug versus the guard. Mano y mano. You open the great pearl, and within its velvet-lined chamber find the statuette of the West. A tiny fountain flows excitedly above its triangular base. Never spilling a drop, you have completed this part of your mission. All right, got some shit done in this video. Now I need to find a place to rest because this party is hurting. We have the ring of reversal and the statuette of East and West. Save on E. Not sure if it's safe to rest here. There is one more item we want to get before we leave, so let's see if we can get away with a rest. Apparently we can't. Holy shit! Oh, 
I'm glad I fucking healed. Dropping tiny fireball bombs everywhere. <laughs> Finally got a decent one. Oh shit! <laughs> Hit the wrong fucking person. <laughs> Bitch, you look like an enemy. Holy shit, dude. Oh, man. I think I'm just going to reload. See if we can find a uh, better path through here. I think this hall is over infested. So I'm going to reload back before we went in this room. Uh, yeah. And we'll see you in the next video. We are out of time.